What do you do when life hits you with its hardest punch, when everything seems to be going against you? Joining us today is filmmaker, mother, and wife, Lisa Carey, who recently launched a film called Trust, which is a modern day tale of the biblical story of Job. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Oh, thank you, thanks for having me. We'd love to hear what inspired you to um, create this movie Trust, especially with a name like Trust, it has so much like just built into it. It makes us very curious. Yeah, well, it's been uh, a long journey for my husband and I, um, just in, in making a film. Uh, it took us seven years to conceive um, a child. And so in that time, we had to kind of go through a lot of things, which actually um, brought us about, um, we concepted this storyline, also seeing marriages falling apart. Mm. Um, we concepted this storyline to encourage people. And, um, and I guess the reason why we started making films was just basically because we wanted to see better content out there. Mm. Well, because I'm now curious and I'm sure our viewers are curious, let's um, take a look at the trailer for Trust and then we'll jump back in and, and have a chat about it. Great. In 2013, um, my wife discovered a lump on her chest. Six months later, she was gone. I was mad at God. I was angry at the world. I was angry at those couples whose wives didn't die, who had families, whereas I had nothing. And I reached a crossroad in my life where I realized I had to choose. I could keep going that way, or I could change direction. I realized that I had to look for the small good things in my life. I had to dig deep from inside my pain to find them. No! I hate you! Sir, can you hear me? Yes, everyone suffers in this life and some people more than others, but that's life. That's what makes life what it is. And even in that pain, there are good moments. And if you let them slip by, then you're letting life slip by. You need to learn to thank God. Because this, yeah, even this, is part of the plan. What are you doing? Saving my marriage. Come on, one more step, come on. And another one. And another one. Run! Run! You know, this idea of, um, as I was watching, I was so engrossed in it, this idea of challenge and all of the, you know, challenges that life brings, it's universal. How, how closely does it tie into your story? Yeah, well, I think that's really why we chose the story of Job, because it is so relatable to everybody. And as I was just saying before that, um, you know, our journey of um, believing for children and it was a seven year battle and failed IVF. Mm. So that's, that's a lot of what we had to go through and also personal struggles, just um, walking through depression as well. Yeah. And how is it that you were able to channel everything you're feeling? Because we all go through challenges and everyone reacts to them differently. How were you able to cha channel that? Not just in a creative sense, but to feel like you had hope outside of the whole situation that was going on. Uh, do you mean within the film or as an actor or? Or just yeah. you personally and then, you know, expressing that then through your film? Yeah, so I think, um, I think sometimes we look at challenges as, well, they are challenges, but as a negative, but actually they actually bring good things into our life. And for us, the journey of children, we could have sat around doing nothing and saying, oh, poor me, but instead we chose to do something with our life and give back and, and create meaning for our life. And in making a film, uh, you know, we're giving something back, but also by having that struggle actually enabled us to go through the struggle of um, making a film. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't think we kind of realise that creative struggle that happens as well. Mm. So how did you get into film in the first place? Uh, well, it was probably a... I've been an actor for a while and my husband is a producer and a director of photography. And so we actually started just by making short films and, um, and which led us to making the feature film because that's where we wanted to go. Mm. Yeah. 
Do you find that there's, in the industry, many films out there with positive messages or are you finding this is like an empty in, empty space and almost a, a clean canvas sort of thing? Yeah, well, there are a few good um, films out there, mostly, mostly coming out of America, mm. but as for faith-based films, there's not many actually coming out and good quality. Um, I see there's lacking in quality and I think overall I'm just... I think we as a couple are discouraged with what's on content mm. these days on both TV and media and how that's filling our minds and um, whittling away at our conscience um, without even realising and our morals and our values. Mm. Mm. So for, for people who are not familiar with the, with the story of Job, right, and, you know, hence your movie, mm. what is that element of hope that you're bringing through the movie? Mm. Well, it's really kind of got some uh, teaching tool, tools of how to get through that and... Um, trying to reveal that without revealing the whole storyline <laughs> is, is kind of complicating. <laughs> so I'd really encourage you to watch the movie. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess life is a journey and I think it's the way you, you look at life. It really is about your perspective. And for us, through our difficulties, we had to change our perspective. And, and that's really the key, I think. It's all the way you look at your problems and, um, mm. and developing a resilience to push through um, the difficult times. Or was that something that you had to do with your IVF journey as well, that you had to change that perspective? Um, I think my, for me, it was pretty much just keeping my eyes on God and the, the, his promise for me, because mm. even when the doctors said to me that uh, you're going to have to get a donor egg, that was the word from the doctor. I just kept going back to the word of God, which said that, you know, none shall miscarriage and uh, none shall be barren and just keep standing on that word. And I just, it was my relationship developed with God and he spoke to me through his word and um, that's how I, I could hear his voice and him saying to finally saying to me after the last time because I was like well what now God what what's mm -hmm. going to happen now and he said my word will not return to me void that's a scripture mm -hmm. um, without accomplishing what it needs to do so he's spoken his word and a lot of things with that journey was speaking that word over my body and, and over my womb and um, but keeping in faith but also uh, there was a praise element of thanking God for what he was going to do in my life and believing that he was going to do it before I could even see it happening. Because sometimes we get stuck in our life yeah. and we can't see a way through. But if you can start praising God in that mm. and thanking him, it, it will actually create a joy and it'll, it'll lift up your faith when you don't have faith. Lisa, I'm wondering, like, within the faith community or within um, these inspirational films, sometimes we think about creating content for Christians, but within the broader scheme of, you know, everyone watching films, how do you think that this film, you know, can speak to a wider audience of people who maybe aren't, you know, necessarily having faith at the moment, you know? You know? Yeah, well, I, I mean, we sort of never really just wanted to make just purely faith-based films, but um, I think this story in particular relates to everybody because everyone goes through hard times and a lot of uh, things that we watch don't actually give any answers mm. to how to get through life. So I think that this is a good film and it's not over the top... Um, I guess Christian or churchy, it, it comes. It comes in a very relatable manner, and we've we've seen that just from feedback that we've been given from our community mm. um, that we know that aren't Christians or or believers. Yeah, they just have this sense of hope. I guess that's kind of universal. Like everybody's looking for this this sense of hope. Yes, that's right. And how and how do we get through these hard times? How do we push push through them? Yeah, mm. it's so relatable because we all have a, a point in our life where we have said, "Why is this happening mm. to me?" Yes, yeah. And I think that's that's the real connector Absolutely. with your film. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. And why did you choose the story of Job in particular? I know it has all of the challenges, but um, as Melody was saying, there's so many people, we've been referencing Job back and forth, but so many people probably wouldn't even be familiar with that story. Yeah, well, it really is because it was a relatable story um, that, it, you know, it, it's about a guy who loses his family and all these different things. So it was a really natural, um, easy story to write off. And we, we started filmmaking by actually just taking Bible stories and making them in a modern day version uh, in a way that's understandable and relatable to our culture. Mm. So that's really what we wanted to do to actually um, make it, make people aware of the story that's in there because it actually, even though it's a, a full-on story, it carries a message of hope. Mm. And so that is now in, in a film and a visual manner.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely a story of hope. I just want to pivot a little bit and talk about, because there's probably moms who are watching who are going through this journey of IVF or who are going through this challenge of infertility, and your journey was seven years, mm. and I'm sure there are moms who would be deeply encouraged by the experience that you've had. Um, what were some of those you know, feelings that you had in those beginning stages? Because you talk so much about being able to praise God and being able to continue to see you know, light on the other side, but so many moms are maybe not there yet. Is there anything you can do to speak into that situation? Yeah, it, it is such a tough journey and everybody's journey is is different. And I, I guess I encourage people to really just be spending time with God and, um, and be listening to what is right for for you at that time. And, and God has a season and a timing. And I, I was very much aware of that even when I was in my journey. And um, that even though it seemed it wasn't gonna happen and it was a long journey and it was a lonely journey too. Um, so- Why do you say it was lonely? It was lonely because everybody else my age was having children. Mm. And so I- You have to be happy for them and go to the <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I did. And I chose, I think I chose that I was gonna be different in that I wasn't gonna get bitter and I was going to be happy every time a friend had a child or another baby shower or another baby shower. Oh, another baby shower, <laughs> you know, because that's what it's yeah, like. Yeah. And um, I chose that, no, no matter what happens. Mm. And I also decided that I didn't want it to become more important than um, God and mm. my relationship with God. I didn't want to want it more than that. And in it, I think he gives you the tools. And one of the tools for me was seeing it differently because um, in that time, youth, in that time, what was developed in me was a faith and that faith then enabled us to make a feature film. Mm -hmm. And because there were trials and journeys in that and it gives you resilience to push through. Not only that, we started becoming creative. And I remember the year before I fell pregnant, I said to God, what, um, you know, I just want to know why. Mm -hmm. And I looked at what I'd done that year. He just told me to write down everything that I'd done. And at that year, that was the year we made almost 12 short films. And I wrote some, I directed some, I acted in some, and it was just incredible. And I was like, well, look what I accomplished anyway. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but yeah, I just, and in, in of all to just keep believing mm. and keep speaking the word over your body because the word of God has power. Mm -hmm. God spoke and he created the world. That is that is truth. So if you keep speaking that over your body and um, keep believing and, and, and try and see, try and visualise yourself with that baby in your arms mm. and um, and praise him for it. Mm -hmm. And um, So yeah. if we want to have a look at trust, yep. where do we go? Where do we find it? Uh, you can find it on through our website, which is www.trustthefilm.com. And um, you can buy a copy from there. Uh, it will be coming out um, as a digital download uh, through means of iTunes. And um, I know Kurong will be releasing it this year. So that's another possible way. Yeah. And now just going back to the good news is you have ch two children now. Yeah, we have two <laughs> children. children. Get there. <laughs> yes, yes. I've got two children and um, Marvel and Dare are their names. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel, because we got this verse that we would marvel um, at what God has done, how marvellous are your mm -hmm. works, so oh God. Yeah, so yeah, excitingly and we Dare? do have children. And yeah. Dare, well, that's another story. <laughs> 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 but um, it's it's uh, for God is able to do super abundantly above what you could dare to ask or imagine, mm -hmm. and that's exactly where what dare is, and that's that's the story of our journey. Well, they definitely have life already spoken into them. Yeah, yes. I feel like they're going to have an amazing journey too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm really excited that you're able to join us um, to talk about your film, to talk about your creative pursuits, as well as to talk about your kids. And you know, I've been inspired just by everything that you've been talking about here today. So, you know, after today's show, I feel happy and inspired to face life's challenges. And I hope that you've loved spending this time together as much as we have loved spending this time with you. Um, we've loved, you know, being here with you on the show and being here with the ladies as well. And um, I can't wait until next time. So if you'd like to hear more from the ladies and you would like to know more about um, other episodes that we have, you can visit us on our YouTube account or you can see us on our website, mumsatthetable.com. Our Facebook page is facebook.com, mums at the table. Table.com, or you can find us on Insta at Mums at the Table. Take care and um, God bless. Can't wait to see you till next time. 